Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Nighttime Astro Live. Hi, I'm Shannon, and welcome to the Lunar Ladies community. If you're new to the group in the community, welcome. Uh, I am the owner, operator, and high priestess for the Lunar Ladies community, and we're going to have some fun looking at the astrology for tonight. So I'm looking at mainly the full moon in Aquarius that's happening on Thursday, August 11th. And when uh, today's the 8 8 uh, portal, right? So we're celebrating another wonderful 8 8 or, you know, synchronized day where every month we get, you know, last month was 7 7, June was 6 6, May was 5 5, right? And so here we are in August. Happy birthday to the Leos and the Virgos, especially Linda Light, who was like, where's my birthday? It's missing from the calendar. <laughs> Her birthday is not till the end of the month on the 30th. So happy birthday to all the Leos and the Virgos soon. Okay, so I'm very excited to dive in. I have a blog post that you can go to my website, lunarladies.com, and you can read the, the deets, the details. I break it down for you there. And, and I'm really, uh, I'm very visual. So when I, you know, when the, when the graphics are flowing, I'm like, ooh, I like that. That's so pretty. Oh, look at the colors. Oh, the bear showed up. Like, ugh. I love when it all just flows together. So very visual. And that's the way I learned. And so one of the tricks, um, I'm kind of thinking about a creative idea, but I just recently got a deck of astro cards and I want to show them to you because when you use the cards, it really helps you understand the astrology um, through imagery and keywords. And it just makes tapping into this uh, beautiful metaphysical science, star knowledge, a lot easier. So uh, a, a beautiful deck I recommend, especially for uh, clients who want to study astrology with me, um, is the Star Codes Astro Deck, Heather Rowan Robbins. And I really love this deck. It's, um, you know, got everything. It's got the houses, the signs, the planets, the aspects. But mostly what I really love about this deck is the artwork that makes or break it, breaks it for me. Like if the artwork's like kind of funky, I just can't connect. But if the artwork looks like this, I'm all down with it. <laughs> so I'm going to be doing a workshop on how I use the cards to understand what's happening in the night sky. So look for that maybe in the fall. I'm also interested in taking uh, Lainey Love Dolby. She is working on how to create your own Oracle deck course. And I'm highly considering joining that because I want, I feel like I need to make my own deck. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what comes out with that. But anywho, what are we doing tonight? We're going to say hello to the 88 Energy. And I want to just ex explain from my point of view, my humble opinion, uh, that 88 Lionsgate energy. It's really talking more about the heliacal, meaning the rising of the solar sun star of Cyrus. It talks about it's the heliacal rising of Cyrus, which was celebrated in depth yearly as an annual event to the ancient Egyptians and the ancient Mayans that we know of so far. But when Cyrus, our twin star to our sun solar system, the Cyrus sun is, some believe, is a twin. We have a binary star. We live in a binary star solar system. So it's not only just our solar system with sun, Mercury, Venus, the Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, the asteroid belt, um, getting to Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. It's a binary system. So that means there's two, right? Not just our solar system alone, but it's connected to another solar system. And they believe that it is the blue star Kachina Sirius. And so when there's a certain time of year, one time of year where the blue star Sirius rises before our sun and we can actually see it. And it's, 
noted um, colloquially as the dog days of summer because we have two suns. So it heats things up, right? And the dog star, serious, the dog days, warm. So it means that it's the time of the year when we have two suns hitting us, activating us, solar light codes, experiencing our bodies are picking up that esoteric, energetic light language from our twin sun. So it's a wonderful, special time of year. But what would happen in ancient Egypt is that it would activate the Nile to flood the plain, which when it flooded uh, the plain, water was there. And I believe at this time in ancient Egypt, I don't think it was as desert-like that we see it now. I think it was a different uh, ecosystem. But it would flood, the Nile would flood, bringing in this beautiful water, of course, and silty loam, and things would grow as a result. So the abundance would come. And so to the ancient Egyptians, that was like the mother, you know, coming to bring the bounty and the abundance, the life. It was beautiful, right? We had the Isis celebration. We've got that flooding of the Nile. So uh, this is what's traditionally celebrated. And so when this, and so it kind of shifts and changes depending on where you are on the planet uh, year to year, but the heliacal rising of Cyrus, I believe this year is happening right at the full moon on August 11th, August 10th, 11th. So in that full moon portal. And so I, my feeling was like, whoa, we don't always get a full moon during the heliacal rising of our twin star right, our binary system, solar system rising, joining forces. And so to me, it feels like the Lionsgate energy, the abundance, the 8-8, the eternal. And when you look at the tarot cards, the Lemeskis, right, Lemeskat, the, the infinite sign of infinity, that's, to me, that twin star abundance energy that's just self-perpetuating. It's beautiful, it's, you know, eternal, unending uh, abundance. And so that's happening under the power of a full moon. And I believe it's the last of the super full moons being closest to the earth. And so I really was excited to talk about the 8-8 energy in relation to the full moon. So I hope that makes sense. So let's head on over to the astrology table, right? Looking at the chart itself. But first, I'm going to show you the blog posts where, so you can go check out the information, especially if astrology charts feel somewhat overwhelming to you at this point. But they don't have to be because we're going to break it down, make it easy to understand. And you're like, I got this. I got this. So here we are um, at uh, lunarladies.com. You can click on the blog. Also, if you go to just Lunar Ladies itself, oops. My um, browser's out of date. <laughs> you scroll down to the bottom. It's going to, all the recent posts are right on the, the last three posts are on the site itself. So you click on that, you get right to the post. And here we have, uh, we have two power animals showing up for us. A white dove and a bear. And to me, when we look, you know, we get this power animal of the spirit bear, and it's happening during an astrological event. To me, it signals the power of the Big Dipper, Ursa Major, uh, the Starry Plow, right? And so, uh, and I'll talk about why this is important and um, how things started merging and matching together. So we have the power animals of the Great Bear and the White Dove, the Big White Dove, both working simultaneously together possibly as a twin binary star solar system, right? So when you get to the blog post, I've titled this um, energy, the ancient future is the ancient past, right? And we have that kind of Egyptian, ancient Egyptian, ancient mind energy showing up. And so it really uh, spoke to me in this way. And, uh, Lainey in her Sacred Revolutionary Oracle deck, uh, one of the cards that Ken pulled on the uh, activation of the Uranus, Mars, 
lunar nodes in Taurus uh, day last Sunday, he picked the card that had the beautiful um, eloquent phrasing of the ancient architects of, or the, you know, the architects of the ancient future. And it really spoke to me like, wow, we think of our future, something that hasn't happened, but maybe it's from an ancient time of maybe returning to the pure essence of our uh, source creation of who we are, where we're from, what is this place we call home in the cosmos? It's original design, it's original essence. It's, and to me, that's the future where we're going because uh, in evolutionary astrology, there's two forces at work, separating and returning. And so if you look at like the energy of the Big Bang, Big Bang happened and we had all this separation goes out, but then it eventually returns to source. And so in our evolution of our souls, we separate from our divine origins and essence to go and learn and expand, shift, change, and grow. But then the impetus is to return home to source. And so some of us are in stages of the separation, still in that space of needing to, to separate, individualize. But when you get to the point of that fruition state of the individualized, you start to turn to spirit and spirit always returns home. And I equate this as well when we look at, uh, in my sound healing practice, the, uh, the heart meridian, the heart chakra, and what causes insomnia, according to ancient traditional Chinese medicine, is that the spirit has not returned home, meaning the spirit goes out during the day, does all its things, but it eventually reaches maximum uh, experience and turns and comes home to the heart. And when the spirit has forgotten to return home or the mind has separated to, from the body to where the body is calling the spirit home so that we can sleep and regener regenerate in the heart of, of creator, uh, we, you know, the body stays up at night because it's looking for a spirit to return home. So I really feel that this Aquarius uh, full moon, super full moon, has this energy of returning, reconnecting to our ancient past, which is really the ancient future that, you know, is the essence point. We went out through the big bang, separated, but now it's, we're hearing the call to return home, having grown, having evolved, having experienced a lot. And we bring all those teachings of wisdom and life experiences back to the core, back to the high, back to the home. And so I got very excited when I saw that Saturn uh, is under the Sabian symbol of a great bear waving his paws. And I'm like, oh, Saturn is going like this. Hey, it's about uh, Ursa Major. And to the ancient Taoist cosmologist, Ursa Major, is where our solar system, the Milky Way, moves out to merge with the greater uh, galaxy, which is the Andromeda galaxy. But how we get home is through Ursa Major, which is the Great Bear. Okay, so let me just briefly go through this um, blog post so you can get the nuances, get the um, get the the cliff notes. <laughs> hi, Bianca. Hi, Ken. Welcome, welcome. Right? Lions, tigers, and bears. Oh, I was, I'm so excited about the bear energy. <laughs> so excited. Okay, so you go to lunarlace.com, click on the latest blog post. You'll find the full moon um, to kind of start to learn about the energy and then start adapting it and applying it to your personal astrology chart. That's why we look up to see what's going on because we want to apply it to our own individual experience so we can utilize the energy to help us in our lives. Okay, so remember that a full moon is the six month fruition of the new moon of that sign. So I link back to the Aquarius new moon of January 31st. So I want you to also take a moment to look back in your life at that time, the end of January, what was happening in your life, in your, in your soul, what intentions did you set? What was, you know, where was your frame of mind and focus? That energy that you set in motion is returning to in its fullness, fullest expression. 
So I linked to the uh, Newman blog post from then so you can get a sense of what, what, what was happening. Find it in your chart. It was 12 degrees Aquarius. And now we're at 19 degrees Aquarius. So it's probably in your Aquarius world house, all this is taking place. So uh, we're going to get a lot of contribution, a lot of energy there to remind us like, hey, I'm not only making an impact in my own life, maybe in my community, maybe in my country, my world, but now we're looking at the galactic field. <laughs> so this is a really a huge time to spread your soul wings to fly. So the, the new moon, or I'm, I'm sorry, the full moon is sitting with Saturn. And that's why we're going to talk about the great bear. Full moon is conjunct, meaning within 10 degrees of Saturn in Aquarius retrograde. The Leo sun is opposite the galaxy or the solar system on the other side with Leo energy. The sun is the ruler of the sign of Leo. So at home, right? So now we have... Uh, Saturn opposite the sun, the moon opposite the sun. And when we get to the chart, you'll see the great square, which is uh, being uh, um, merged with the Taurus Scorpio opposition, meaning Mars, Uranus, and the lunar nodes. But we have two helpers, and that, and they are coming in the form of Chiron, the wounded healer, and our goddess girlfriend, Pallas Athena goddess of wisdom. They're all coming in to help us at this moment. But let's start with Saturn. I want to give a big shout out to our friend Saturn, who is not only the ruler of Capricorn, he's also the ancient ruler of Aquarius, meaning before Uranus was discovered in the 1700s, Saturn was the one we turned to when we uh, were investigating the energy of Aquarius. Okay. So Saturn is at 22 degrees now, right? Big daddy can totally, <laughs> I love it. Oh, time daddy, <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, another shout out to Lainey Love who uh, eloquently calls Saturn time daddy. Um, I just love that. Okay, so, and I love this picture of this bear. So beautiful and I was drawn to getting the picture of a bear in winter. And that's going to make sense because of uh, the support team of Chiron and Pallas Athena. They are pointing us towards the fall and even towards winter. So there's uh, messaging in this photograph. <laughs> okay, so the great bear is known as Ursa. That's Latin for bear. Major is big. So the great big bear. <laughs> which is Ursa Major, also known as the Big Dipper. Now, Saturn is believed by a lot of esoteric uh, knowledge that at one point in our solar system, Saturn was the first sun. Now, when a planet has rings, the way that Saturn has seven rings, it indicates that that planet is in balance. So at one point, Saturn was an evolutionary state as a burning, flaming sun. It reached a state of perfection or balance, and it, and, it, and it became what we see as Saturn with the seven rings. So it's kind of went through its seven layers of initiation. And we see that in a lot of in, uh, ancient religions about uh, the number seven is considered the number closest to spirit. We have seven main chakras that we work with. And that also, to me, Saturn being part of the full moon in Aquarius, which deals with your energy body. Saturn has seven rings. We, you know, we work with those seven major chakra centers in our energy body. So it's also a call to check in with your chakras, root, sacral, solar, which are the lower chakras, heart, the bridge, throat, third eye, crown which are the upper chakras. Now, if you take my sound healing uh, course, Tuning Forks for Starseed, I start opening up to more chakras that you tune up. That's awesome, called the Crystal Palace. Okay, so Saturn being Time Daddy, original sun at 22 degrees, which is the uh, Ascended Master ener uh, number, energy, 
is saying, hey, we're returning to a, a, a very earlier time in our solar system history. And it was a time when I ruled two signs and I was the sun. Now we have, so we have ancient sun Saturn, opposite current modern day sun, which is in Leo and the ruler of Leo. So we have ancient sun, modern day sun in a harmonic wave of lighting things up, enlightening, you know, solar activation. And with it being that the Sabian symbol for 22 Aquarius, is a bear waving his paws. Now I'm saying he's going like this, like, hey. <laughs> and so to the Taoist cosmologist, the Great Dipper, the Great Bear is embodying the first ray of the Godhead. Now the second ray of the Godhead, which is love and wisdom. So the first ray is power and that's being governed by Ursa Major. The second ray of the Godhead is uh, love and wisdom. And those two ray, or that ray, the second ray, is governed by the binary solar system that we live in. Our sun solar system and the Cyrus blue star solar system. They are love and wisdom. To me, Sirius is, um, and we will ask Ken because he has star Sirius in his temple. <laughs> He's the guardian of star Sirius. That is wisdom. Our solar system, remember our sun is ruling Leo, is love. So the second ray of the Godhead is love and wisdom, which we, that's where we live. We live in the dimensions, the systems of love and wisdom. And thank God we have a twin, which is so nice. And Blue star Sirius is our twin system. So the third ray of the Godhead, there's seven rays, but the third ray is active intelligence, and that is ruled by the Pleiades, right? And then there's four sub rays. I won't get into those, but I love that where we live, we're in the three primal rays, and it follows Ursa Major, our twin system, our solar system. Blue star Sirius, the Pleiades. Okay. So the Pleiades is merging with our through active intelligence, through love and wisdom into power that is in an evolutionary state of merging the Milky Way galaxy, which all of us live, Earth's major, our solar system, blue star Sirius, the Pleiades, right? That's all part of the Milky Way that's merging with a bigger galaxy known as the Andromeda galaxy. And how we get there from where we are in this system is through Ursa Major. So Saturn saying, hey, I'm embodying the energy as an ancient sun to direct your attention or your energy, your focus to Ursa Major. So when you're outside at night, look up, you will see the, the Big Dipper in the sky. You can use your star apps but look for this for the uh, the starry plow or the silver or the the silver the I think it's the big ladle right in the sky the big dipper. Okay, so that was my take on Cyrus the Great Bear, Ursa Major, ancient sun pointing the way. Now, what what does he want? It how do we merge right? Uh, he's saying there's an instinctive drive now to own and being sovereign, your crown chakra, your spiritual right to shift, change, and grow, or to exist, right? That, what is existence? It's a dynamic life is about shifting, changing, growing, expanding eternally. And we have the ancient architects of our galaxy, which is part of this um, esoteric knowledge. And to connect with the Ursa Major or the starry plow in the sky, you will feel your soul getting an activation because from Saturn, the original sun, opposite our sun, ancient light codes, memories coming through. So let's do it. <laughs> All right. Next step is the conjunction. And uh, hopefully you all did the activation with Ken and Star Sirius. It was awesome. 
But this is again being activated by the full moon nymph. It was activated by that conjunction. Uh, now it's activated by in square with the full moon, Saturn, and sun. And so when we look through the, the guys, because this is a full moon, I'm going to look at the lunar nodes first, right? Because they're connected, they're, they're created by the moon. And so the lunar nodes are at 17 degrees Taurus and Scorpio. And so seven, so I go to Scorpio first because we have to unwind the past. And we have Saturn saying, hey, I'm the ancient sun. It's all about the ancient past to build the ancient future or reconnect to the ancient future or return to it. So it's the side of an autumn leaf was a saving symbol for 17 degrees Scorpio. So to me that said, hey, the energy is going to maximize in fall, autumn, you know, end of September, October. And so what we want to do now is start to prepare through this portal gateway um, towards fall equinox. And so the energy says to um, Scorpio says right now, start this now. And so you can start to move through it and have fun with it. And this is really powerful, potent, good feeling energy. Don't be afraid. It says, start to investigate your past lives where you were the most powerful, right? You want to remember those lives where you had power and you used it wisely, you used it with love, you used it with wisdom. You want to reconnect to that to fuel your life now and one of the ways that you can uh that i do it is my druid astrology past life readings are focusing on where you had power in the past karmic blessings and rewards that you've built so when you do a reading with me i can navigate you towards finding that in your natal chart right so it's a specialized uh reading that i do uh, given uh from the druids so step one is find those memories that are locked deep in your soul. You don't have to go far. You can use your oracle cards. You can use a past life regression. You could use, you know, have a reading with me. We can really dive deep. It's fun. It's awesome. And it feels good. Ask Ken. He's had the Druid reading. Um, and then Bianca, she's done the, the Soul Purpose series. So she's got access to that past. Um, you want to just find one, find one lifetime where you're like, oh, yeah, I remember. And a, a, a clue to help you is what do you resonate with? What do you just feel automatically connected to? Where you're like, yeah, I love that. That's me. Yeah. That's an indication that you possibly had a life where you developed that skill and it was awesome. And you still got it, right? Kind of like when uh, middle-aged people say, I still got it. <laughs> you still got it. As a middle-aged soul, you still got it. All right. So the next step, find the one lifetime. That's your homework. One lifetime where you're like, yeah, that was power I, I, that I developed in my soul landscape. I'm bringing that through the veil and I'm putting it into motion now in this life, right? This current lifetime. All right, the next step is this is coming from the lunar, uh, the north node in Taurus. And at 17 degrees, it's saying, um, you know, start to cultivate your resources, right? And what do we do in the fall? We harvest. We just had, uh, we're on the lunar llamas now, meaning, wow, we get to reap what we sow. If you had a garden in spring, you're getting those juicy uh, berries and apples are coming in and all kinds of melons and deliciousness squashes. If you don't have a garden, get to your farmer's market or look for some specials in the grocery store. Start to can and freeze. Make sauces, make chutneys, make food for the winter. <laughs> You'll be so glad you did. So it's about storing things, storing up your goodies. Like, what did the squirrels do? And the chipmunks in fall gather their nuts. So we have this Taurus uh, wisdom that's saying, I want you to start cultivating your food and growing your resources, not only just food, but money. 
So start to think about, oh, I'm gonna fill my pantry up in the next three months. Ooh, I'm really gonna, you know, I could, if I grew all these tomatoes, I'm gonna can them or I'm gonna make sauce or I'm gonna, you know, get those beans or I'm gonna pickle stuff, right? You wanna have your pantry full of uh, food that is fresh, that maybe you, you know, preserved it, right? Because, you know, who knows in winter it might be a little slim pickings and you're like, oh my God, I'm so glad I don't even have to go to the grocery store. I've got a whole pantry full of stuff. I go to, I, I created my own grocery store. <laughs> and then of course you'll have plenty to share with uh, family and friends and neighbors, but also do the same thing with your money. Start to look at say, how can I save more money? How can I invest my money so that it makes money? Are there things that you can invest in that will give you a return on your investment? And Taurus says, I, you know, I grow slowly over time. So this could be like, oh, oh I'm going to open up a money market account or maybe a high interest yielding savings account. And then I'm going to put money into it every week or every month, right? Something where you're building towards the future. That's the energy that wants you to take action. So you take these steps and you're, you're doing really good. And if you want some one-on-one -on -one personalized help, you can get, uh, go to my website and get a one-to-one -one reading. We could take a look and create a plan. All right, let's get into the helpers. Chiron and Palestina. Don't you love this image? I was so proud of myself. I was like, ooh, look at them when I created. I'm so happy. And then I'm inspired by these amazing artists on, uh, you know, on social media. I mean, Rosa Marquette, oh my God, Rosa Maria Marquette, have you seen her light-coded artwork? I'm like, oh my God, where is, this is an angel on the earth. Like her art is so beautiful. So she's inspired me to kind of uh, do my own attempts on Canva. <laughs> but this is my um, artist rendition of the energy of Pallas Athena and Chiron. So Chiron is the wounded healer, currently 14 degrees Aries. And he's inviting you to wake up early in the morning. Aries is about the spring, about sunrise, facing east, right? So when you merge your behaviors with the timing of things, so get up early and have a quiet morning of contemplation. You can read a spiritual book. You could do an oracle card reading. You can sit, you can light a candle, Aries is fire, sit in meditation. You can pray. You can listen to music. You could do morning gentle yoga, right? Just, but get it in when it's quiet, the rest of the household sleeping. You make a choice, an intentional choice to wake up early and just be with the sunrise. Be with the birds coming out and waking up too. Like be with nature in quiet contemplation mode. Because Chiron right now is about unwinding emotional blocks in the body, Aries, the physical form. Chiron is healing those wounds. And so when you're up early in a prayerful, spiritual state of mind, body, and soul, you can move energetic blocks with the cosmos, alignments and energy and you want to also look at your relationships and really connect deeply with those relationships in your life that feel peaceful and that you know connect with you at a heart level where you just feel like I'm home with this person like I can call Ken and I can have an amazing conversation and feel right at home I can do that with Linda, I can do that with, I'm very blessed to have friends I can do that with. Uh, so those are the ones I really want to really kind of give more and more gratitude, more and more uh, cultivation and nurturing of those and really give thanks. So I want you to find a relationship in your life that you really feel that could be with a spouse, a child, uh, but really, where do you feel at most at peace and at home? What are those relationships for you, right? And if it's one, it may be with a pet. It doesn't matter. 
but or or nature you might have a favorite tree or a plant that really speaks to you or a part of a, an area in your near your home just go there really connect it's very very important right now because we're heading into choppy waters and you want to have your inner light lamp lit you want to have a lot of extra oil <laughs> to get you through don't be caught off guard we have plenty of time to prepare and feel right at home within our own skin, our own self, with the people that mean the most to us. Okay, so Pallas Athena, she's coming through the veil right outside of the Akashic Library. She's bringing books from the uh, libraries of Alexandria. She's saying, I really want you to connect with ancient wisdom. Um, I know, People in our community that have been recently been visiting Akashic libraries in their dreams. <laughs> Ask for your own Akashic library guide to take you through or to help or your angel. Remember, you're getting those kisses from your guardian angel at night. Ask him to send you a, an ancient wisdom book that really connects with your soul. Like, I love the, the thought of the libraries of Alexandria. Like, to me, that's a past life where I felt like I had some power. <laughs> I'm like, woo, I love that life. I love just sitting around and studying and listening to philosophies and breaking it down. And you know, I kind of do that now, but in a different way. <laughs> but uh, so I'm going to like really get into some of the ancient scholars. Like, you know, there's, uh, I love um, Hypatia, Plato. Aristotle, right? Who are these kind of, uh, you know, philosophers, ancient wisdom that you can go, wow, yeah, that it could be Egyptian, could be Mayan, could be uh, part of your own culture, but find something where you can go, oh, I'm, I, that, I'm learning so much. Okay, and then finally in the blog post, I give you the breakdown of the next two weeks. Uh, recommended readings. I have a new reading I'm offering called Natal and Progressions. <laughs> I'm going to do a live on that so you know what that means. But progressions are about where are you on your journey of life as your soul is progressing through the, the plan, the, the incarnational promise for this life. So we look at your natal chart itself and then how it's unfolding. It's called a progression. Uh, but I will do a live on those. I'll show you because the reason why I created this new offering is because the, the new moon in Leo was exact my progressed ascendant and Mars. And it hit me like a ton of bricks in a good way. But I really felt the power of, of getting your progress chart activated. <laughs> so I'm like, I need to offer this as to the community. So I'll do a live on what that is. I'll give you an example of my own chart. And that's an offering that you can choose uh, to do one-to-one -one work with. So I'm going to wrap up this part of the live with Sabian symbol for 19 degrees Aquarius, where the full moon is. And here's our second power animal, a big white dove who is a message bearer, right? Don't we all just want messages from spirit? So you have a white dove, a piece, um, she's also a symbol of the great mother energy uh, coming your way, giving you flying from the cosmic galactic field to the earth, finding you right in your home at night to, to drop uh, a spiritual message. And um, I recently had a dream uh, that was a past life memory uh, from the Florentine times, 1400. So I, I you know, been looking and I was like, oh, I got to watch the Borgias. So mom and I are watching the Borgias on Netflix. And because um, I really just need to connect with that timeline. And part of uh, what they do, you know, they would send their carrier pigeons with notes. And I'm like, oh, isn't that interesting? So here's, you know, the way that notes have been or messages have been given throughout a long time uh, in the in our recent ancient past. So really what the dove is bringing you is the awareness. Now remember Aquarius is about the future now. What do we, the choices we make now are, are forming, shaping our future tomorrow. So the dove is saying, hey, if you were 
focusing in the now on doubt. You are creating your life to be focused on doubt, right? And that's a, a, a heavy, dense, negative energy. But in the moment now, if you're focusing your life on your faith, which is more of a positive energy, your life will begin to become a life of faith, right? And that's a more uh, spiritually connected life. So that's the big message of what are you tuning into? Messages are coming from spirit. They could be coming from your ancestors. To me, and, and, the, and the dove is saying, this is a long-term prayer. So think about what have been my long-term prayers, things I pray for over and over and over. Those answers are coming. So you want to be in a frame of mind to match the spiritual energy of the answer. So if you're in a negative place and, you know, complaining and sad or angry and frustrated, you're not matching the energy of the spiritual message that's coming to you right now. And because these are long-term prayers, and we've got the South Node, which is past lives, uh, very much activated now, these could be messages from past lives of long-term prayers that you had then. So you might be getting big answers, echoes from unresolved issues from past lives. And you can look at some what's retrograde in your natal chart. Uh, any planets in retrograde at the time you were born, that's an unresolved issue that could have a long-term energy that you might be getting an answer to under this full moon. Okay, so uh, the solar guidance from the Leo moon or the Leo sun is saying uh, it's the, the beauty or the imagery of Zuni uh, sun worshipers. So this is talking about Getting, gathering together in groups to worship, to celebrate spirit, source, sun, fun, energy, nature. So find a gathering that is an alignment with your inner peace and love and um, enjoy together. It could be a music festival that connects with you. It could be a, a prayerful group. It could be going to church on Sunday with your community, but gather together to celebrate life. And you'll capture that solar activation from the sun. Okay, so let's just quickly practice our astro skills and take a look at the chart. So here we have the event chart for the full moon, August 11, 6.36 p.m. here in California. So we get a sunset. So if we, the sun setting, um, you know, as the sun goes down, the moon will be rising, right? So remember they're always opposite so for us in california just look opposite the sunset and the moon will be rising um and then of course in uh east coast it'd be 9 36 p.m so it'll really kind of really be around that sunset time for people here so ken has already picked up the the big elephant in the room which is this this red square <laughs> known as a grand square or a grand cross. When you look at it from the cross point of view, you're looking at opposite angles, right? If you look at it from the square point of view, you're looking at the short 90 degree angles. So there's four 90 degree angles. In a cross, it's 280 degree angles. I like to go big and look at the oppositions for first, then move it in to the square energy because you'll get more space to understand the energy. And squares tend to be, um, you know, they, they want to activate, break through, block, build tension to build energy. So if you have something like an old issue in your life, it just keeps appearing over and over and over. Square energy will help you build the, enough power to break through. If it's kind of something where you're like, I just need to see it from a bigger perspective, go into the oppositions to get a more harmonic view, a bigger picture. So here we have the moon, 19 degrees Aquarius. So here's a sign of Aquarius. Here's a symbol for the moon. And here's the degree 19. It is right next door to Saturn retrograde in Aquarius at 22. Okay. Okay, so that's sun and moon. So we travel across the solar system to find the sun in the sign of Leo, sun symbol, 
19 degrees, all right? They're always opposite. That's a full moon. Sun opposite the moon. Okay, so that's the first one that we've been talking about. And we've got the great bear. We've got the, the big white dove. We've got the Zuni sun worshipers. It's like, okay, just let these images just float around in your mind's eye. Because what they do is they start unlocking uh, awareness that you can tap into that's a higher level than the surface mind. It's from the psyche. Okay, since we look at this opposition, let's look at the other opposition. Here's the south node with that autumn leaf pointing to the, and this is investigating the power that you had in other past lives, right? Bring it back through the veil. You want to access your, your, you developed that. You did the work. It's time to celebrate the rewards of that. Bring it through. And then what, when you do that, it starts aligning you with the North Node in Taurus that says, let's cultivate our resources. Uranus, which is, let's a uh, quick change, sudden changes. And of course, Mars is starting to leave the conjunction, but he's still within 10 degrees and he's activating the principle, the principle of, uh, of, the, of the conjunction. And so it's about uh, cultivating your resources to activate change in your future. And that's food, money, all the things you need for survival, but not even just survival, let's take it up a notch, abundance and gratitude and grace. The South Node is saying, investigate mysteries of your past life. Where was your power? Bring it on through. You wanna get some help to find out how was I powerful in other lifetimes? Get a druid reading. Okay, now here's, oh, and the sun and moon over here are about you know the ancient sun and the super sun joining forces as partners. They're creating alliances, building new structures for the ancient future for us to return to a state of grace in our, in our more evolved state of self. The sun is saying, shine your, your passion, your lights, your passion and your light from the source, right? Um, Saturn is activating uh, the alliance, the structure, the community. But remember, Saturn is also the ruler of Capricorn. And Pluto says, I'm over here to help, right? So I'm also adding my assistance, which is wanting to rebirth these, uh, these structures that are here now so that they can be reassembled in the future at a higher level uh, of soul, inner authority, sovereignty, uh, the, the greater good for the collective. And it's most empowered through groups and associations. Okay, so let me just show you real quick who our helpers are. Here's Pallas Athena in the sign of Gemini. And she's at that nice 18th degree matching the Uranus, uh, lunar nodes and Mars conjunction. And so she's over here saying, bringing in the power of, of thinking, Gemini, to a higher state of wisdom. And again, she's kind of connecting through that Ursa Major, that uh, Blue Star Sirius, that's heliacal rising, which is the system of the divine power of wisdom. And she's saying, her messaging is about speak wisely to one another because uh, Gemini is about small talk, you know, socializing. Uh, and in the shadow, it goes towards gossip. It goes towards being mean on social media, right? Um, and she's saying speak wisely with your words because they matter. Uh, this is uh, bringing in the energy of Libra, which is speak eloquently, speak poetically with grace and beauty. Because what you're doing now is you're pollinating the field with your communication. So make sure that what you're posting on social media or the conversations you're having with your friends and acquaintances, what are you pollinating with your communications? You wanna be pollinating beauty and wisdom. So that's what she's saying, speak wisely to one another. And uh, I, uh, a wonderful um, gentleman named Dennis, who's our gardener, he's, he, he told me this wonderful story. He's like, yeah, he's all, when I'm out with my you know, groups, people, friends, 
and people start to gossip. He's like, I'm out. I just say, I, I'm, no, I'm not participating in this. I, I'm like, that is so wise. And so by him taking himself out, he's also showing others to give him permission. You don't have to engage in this energy. It's not good for anybody. They're not here to defend themselves. Don't be starting fires when you don't need to speak nicely about each other. And then if people can't hear that, then just leave. <laughs> that was like right on Dennis. I like that. I'm going to adopt that too. So let go of gossip, minutia, you know, small, you know, small talk that doesn't mean anything. You want to be focusing your words on uh, pollinating the field with wisdom and eloquence. Now Chiron, he's over here, 16 degrees, Aries, right? So he's fueling the Leo fire and uh, Palestine is fueling the moon and Saturn's power. So here we have Chiron saying, you know, it's healing energy, clear your chakras, it's your kundalini. You, you want to generate energy by with having cleared chakras to pull energy up from the earth, pull energy down from heaven, pull energy up from the earth, pull energy down from heaven, because you're a conduit for the divine right here, right now. And that's what you want to build together as a, a structure of cooperation with others. And you want to bring that as a contribution, not only to our planet, our solar system, our twin star, and the galactic field. All right. Any questions? <laughs> Wasn't that awesome? That's your full moon update. Oh, and the other thing I want you to, because the lunar nodes are part of this uh, alignment. Uh, I went and did a different chart. It's called draconic chart. So looking underneath, it dials the lunar nodes back to zero, Aries, Libra, and it goes underneath. And I found a connection to the upcoming Mercury retrograde in the fall. And remember, the south node said, you're looking towards the fall for, for uh, to know what's coming. But uh, Mercury retrograde goes uh, Mercury goes retrograde on the 9-11 uh, portal. So September 10th, 11th. And it's connected to this moon. And remember, Mercury rules that Gemini, Virgo energy. And we have a Mars retrograde in Gemini. So uh, I'll have more details on that. But I just want you to be aware of the volatility that's coming into the field. Uh, starting at September 10th, 11th, and then in October, all the way through March, 2023. And so Gemini, it's duality. And so we want to get really good at clearing our inner landscape, uh, 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 fortifying ourselves, nurturing, nourishing, preparing, planning, cultivating. So when we kind of, you know, start to witness the crazy in the collective, we don't get swept up in it. Because this Mars retrograde in Gemini is about the power of neutrality. So if all hell is breaking loose, can you remain eye of the storm in the calm center, neutral, without taking a side, but more connected to galactic spiritual wisdom? Because you've already done the work, because you've got the invitation to the big gala, galactic gala that says, do this now, because when you're gonna need to be centered, grounded, calm, cool, and collected for when things start to shift, change, and grow around you, and you've gotta be able to go with the flow. <laughs> Ken asks, so we're going full-blown crazy town? <laughs> well, you didn't hear it from me, <laughs> but that's what I'm seeing in the stars. So when I see like that level of weaving, um, happening behind the, the scenes, my spidey senses go, hold on, that is important. I need to pay attention to that. And what can I do now so that I am in a good place when crazy starts to happen around me? I don't have to pay attention to it. Um, and from a place of calm, cool, centeredness, I could add, I can contribute to the field in a positive way rather than running around like a chicken with my head cut off <laughs> and adding to the frenzy. No, I'm, that's not my job this life. I'm not adding to the frenzy. I'm adding, 
hmm, would you like my little mixing bowl of medicine that I've been brewing since August full moon? Oh, would you like my pickled canned vegetables and my chutney that I was told by the stars to make? Would you like to come to my piece? And everybody's like, oh, thank you. I'm like, anytime. <laughs> Hi, Tamara, welcome. Oh, you gotta watch the replay. We've got some good stuff brewing and I love your timing. Yes, so what's happening now, Tamara, is we're in the 8 8 portal, but it's really being mostly felt activated and, you know, switched on under the full moon on Thursday. And then that is switching on and activating the upcoming Mercury retrograde and Mars retrograde happening in September. And it's all about the fall. So um, what you do now is preparing for the fall. And when you hit the fall, you'll be ready because all your winter goodies are all stacked up. You're gonna be really, um, uh, abundant chipmunks with a lot of nuts because you paid attention now. <laughs> so uh, we will uh, end it there for now. I'm so happy that you're here tomorrow. I'm going to, you know, watch the replay, have some fun. So look in your natal chart, 19 degrees Aquarius, anything, you know, aspecting that that's where the full moon and Saturn are. 19 degrees Leo is where the sun is. And this is happening on, on August 11th, Thursday. And it's going to be fabulous. So think about your crystals. You're going to want to put them outside. You're going to want to make some full moon water, maybe some flowers in them, or some crystal gem elixirs. Start thinking about, ooh, who start, you know, talking to your oracle cards. I, I like to put my tarot cards out under the full moon to cleanse them. Get your crystals out there, do some ceremony, invite some friends over, make it a feast, have some fun. Dance under the Aquarius full moon. It's called the friendship moon. Phew. Oh, yes, Ken, thank you. Especially with last week, we were talking about the big bags of money. I'll repost the, the full moon money ritual, right? Because it's all about creating the financial abundance because we're going to save it and invest it <laughs> for our future. We're going to have it grow in our garden of wealth and, and abundance. So I'll post that because you want to put some money to get it activated under that full moon for the future, uh, what you need it for, investing uh, together, especially if you have a solid group of friends, pull some resources together and invest in something bigger than you thought you could do because you shared your resources with others. Show me the money. That's right. Show me the money. <laughs> we want to make it rain. And why not? We have the power to do that. So Tamara, also what I want you to do, look back into a past life where you were super powerful. You had it going on. You were like, that was the life. And I want you to bring that energy, those gifts, skills, and talents that you developed, experienced, and put it through the veil and into this life right now. And then tell us how that goes. <laughs> All right, Ken says, dear universe, please deliver my bags of money to the following address. Um, yeah. So if you guys are ever short on amazing one-liners, just hit Ken up because he'll be like, oh, he's got some funny one-liners. That kind of sums it all up. Okay. Thank you so much for gathering together on our Monday, moon day, nighttime astro live. I will be back. I'm going to do a full moon sound ceremony on Thursday. So I'm going to put the links, you know, how to join in. And if you'd like to give a, 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 an energetic exchange love offering, we'll do the burn puja ceremony with sound. Uh, you're more than welcome to do that. You could do prayers for yourself, prayers for others, set intentions, what you want to release, what you want to bring in. Because remember, if you're going to release something on the full moon, have the replacement that or something better, okay? I always like to take one thing out and fill it up with something new <laughs> for the highest good. Okay, so see you later this week on the full moon. If you have questions about uh, what to do, what's going on, feel free to comment in the live or send me a Facebook message or email, shannon at lunarladies.com. And feel free to take part in my personal one-to-one -one readings. 
as well as my on-demand courses, which are still on sale, 50% off. And I'll put links for that too. So if you've been like, hey, I want that tuning for star seed course, it's 50% off. Or if you want that, how do I decode secrets of my natal chart? 50% off. And that's till September. I might extend it, but it's till the end of the month. Uh, but I might do it through the fall. Okay. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Sweet dreams. Take this wisdom into the astral. Connect with your guides, your guardian angels. Wake up refreshed tomorrow knowing exactly what to do. Bye for now.